This is part three of user-defined objects, and this is a part of the information technology grade 12 CAPS syllabus. In part one and two, we were talking about what objects are and we how do we create our own objects, and the two things that we put in our objects were attributes and methods. Now that it's in a separate file and we've created our object, the next question is how do we use these objects in our main program? So how do we declare them, how do we create them, and how do we use the actual object that we have just created? And we're going to refer to our dog show example. And we basically want to take in the values from the input uh, options there. And when you register, we want to display it looking something like that. Now, it is very easy to do this without objects, but we're going to be using objects. So the first thing we're going to be doing is obviously putting these values, the inputs, into the object, and then using the object's method to or methods to display the way we want to display over here. Just to recap what we did in lesson one and lesson two, the part one or part two. Yeah, we've got our object that's in the CLS dog underscore u unit. This is our class where our t dog object has been uh, created, and there's our private attributes, which are the details that cannot be accessed from outside this program. They can only be accessed within because of the private heading. And then the public methods, these are the ones which we can use from outside the program. And we, in the last lesson, created all these private methods over here. So if we go to our original program, here we've got our original program, I want to now start using um, our object. So I want, I've got my input over here, now the first step would obviously be, or the first thing I want to do is put these values into an object. So before we actually start using objects, there are five clear steps that you need to go through whenever you are using objects. Step one is when we go right to the top of our program file, yeah, where we've got all these users, these library files that tell us how to do certain things. Well, you need to understand that our program doesn't know what a T-Dog is. It doesn't know that you've created this new object, and it doesn't know how it works. So we actually need to tell it, hey, if whenever we refer to a T-Dog or refer to its methods, um, you need to know where to look to find out how these things work. So we need to include the library file for our object. And if you remember correctly, we called it CLS dog underscore U. So over here, right at the top, we're just going to add that to the library files dog underscore u and because we've saved it in the same folder as this main program it'll be able to pick it up so as I said the first step is to include the unit library file the second step is now at this point I've gone to my button um, this is where I'm going to declare my object or objects um, very similar to how you would declare these type of variables like a string or integer or a real we need to now declare our object now you obviously can do this in the button locally or you can do it globally it all depends on what you want to do in your program because we have a very simple program I'm just going to declare it locally so over here as part of the variables I'm going to Clear this dog. I'm going to call it S dog details. Well, let me call it O because it's an object. So I know that it's an object. O dog details, and it's going to be of type T dog. Now, this would not be possible if I didn't include the library file at the top. It wouldn't recognize what a T dog is. But because I put it there, it now knows oh, T dog is a special kind of object that we can declare. So step two, we declare our object, just like you would do any other variable. Step three is when we create or instantiate the object. Now, if you remember, we created what was called a constructor. If you remember correctly in our object, we had this constructor, and it takes in the three values, and it almost sets them to default. Now, we need to use that constructor before we can actually start using it. Now, it's actually quite a very different way of using a constructor. Um, it's, it's quite different. You can't just say dot .create. You can't just go, oh, dog details dot create it doesn't work like that for the constructor you've actually got to say my object is equal to a t dog dot create and now it calls the constructor that we created if we did not create our own constructor we could just go create like that sorry without the brackets we could just use that because there is a, a create already built into the t object and because our t dog is a descendant of the t object we can use all the methods that are used in a normal t object and one of them is the t create but we don't have a dot t create with just no parameters because we created one 
if you remember let me just get them up again so there we go so the first one would be the name so I'm just going to be taking the name from my input now it just so happens that they've got the same name as the parameters and that's just because I've called them like that obviously you can put any parameters in here as long as they meet the requirements in other words as long as the first parameter is a string the second parameter is a integer and the third parameter is a real so there we go you declare or you, you create your object or instantiate so this will then create the block in memory and set the default values of the attributes inside your object so the third step create or instantiate the object by using your constructor once you have created your object the fourth step is to use the methods that we have created now we can do whatever we want with our object and we are going to probably use those methods that we created so we've already set the values of the attributes so we can go ahead and start using our methods um, one of the things that we want to display in this edit box over here this rich edit um, we want to start putting some information in so let's start putting the name in so let's say rich, the rich edit dot lines dot add and the first line I'm going to put in I want to put the name of the dog so I'll just put that string in now how do I get the name the s name from my object from my o dog details well if you remember correctly when we created our object we created a accessor which was a method which can get the name for us it returns the name so if I go to my program I'm going to call my o dog details dot and these are all the methods that we created so I want to get the name and so it will return the name and there we go now it should display that name in the rich edit control the second part is I want to display the category so let's add another rich edit dot lines dot add and now we're going to add a label called category and then we are going to add on the category which is also a method that we created this determined category and it also returns a string so I'm going to use that one determined category and so there we go it'll obviously display big size big or medium sized dog big dog or small dog and the third thing that I want to display is the fee that they need to pay whenever they let a dog join the dog show so we again we're going to add the entrance fee entrance fee hopefully I'll spell that correctly and then I'm going to add the other op or the other method that we created now if I type here dog details dot now I know there was a calculate fee method but it's not coming up here the reason for that is because obviously we are in a rich edit lines dot add which means we add in strings so it's only showing me the functions that allow me to return a string so obviously it will it's going to return a real number because it's a currency so we need to convert it from a float to string F so that we can have some details here so there we go once I've done that when I press dot it should come up with a calculate fee there we go calculate fee so I've just called that method and it will return the result over there obviously with a float to string F we need some other stuff so I'm gonna say FF currency comma eight comma two just for completeness sake so as you can see step four I've just used the methods in the way that you want your program to use them and um, whenever I needed to get the name I just called the get name accessor when I ever whenever I wanted to determine the category or get what the fee was then I called the auxiliary methods the determine um, category and the calculate fee and I can use them however way I want to use them in my program now step five is once you are finished with your object and there's nothing else you want to do with it it is a good idea to free the memory that is being used for that object um, Delphi does that automatically for you whenever you use um, other components or other variables but when you create your own it's normally a good idea to free the memory for the object and if you remember in our last lesson we talked about that fifth type of method which was called a deconstructor so there are two main deconstructors that you can use um, as I said you only use these once you are completely finished with your object because once you call this then that object has disappeared you, you, all the data all the information about it has disappeared so 
if I've got my own dog details, all you have to do is dot. Now there is a dot destroy. And as you can see, it's a, a destructor. Now you might say, but we didn't make a destructor. As the destructor, the destroy, the create, the original create, um, these are all methods that were inherited by your object the moment that you said T dog is of type T object. You see, T object has a whole bunch of methods. And instead of rewriting all those methods for every single object that we create, because we said it it comes from the T object. Everything that's in T object can be used for T dog. And so those are the main ones. It's, there's a create, there's a, 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 a destroy. These are all part of the T object. Um, obviously, we can write our own create like we did in this scenario, but in this case, we didn't do a destructor. We don't want to because there's already one done for us. So we can say dot destroy. Now, just a, a, a little tip here, not destroy, destroy. A little problem here. The, the problem with dot destroy is if you have got an object and you destroy it, it works perfectly. But if you haven't got an object, say if something happened and you destroyed it and then you try to destroy it again accidentally, that would create an error message and would say, why are you trying to destroy something that doesn't exist? So there's another type of destructor, which is probably a little bit better to use, and it's a little bit more robust in that it won't make your program crash. And that is the dot free. And I know it's a procedure, but it actually is a destructor as well. It frees this object so that all the memory for it is gone. So rather use dot free because if you use dot free and by some chance you use dot free again for the same object and it's already been freed, it's not going to cause a error message to pop up. So as I said, the fifth step is to free the memory of the object. So let's just recap the, f the five steps. The first step is you must include the library file where you created your object. Okay, and remember that object must be saved in the same folder as your main program. Step one. Step two, you declare your object. So you'd say my whatever it is, like it with a variable, and it's of type T dog or the name of the object that you created. Third step, you must instantiate it or create it. Remember, it is slightly different to how you would use your other methods. You say your variable, your, your object name, so my O dog details, is assigned to a T dog, the type of object dot create and then any parameters that you want to include you obviously put them there and the values for those parameters the fourth step you are using the methods in whatever way you want to use the program to accomplish whatever task you want to do using those methods your mutator your accessor your auxiliary uh, methods there's where you would use them and then the fifth step once you have fully completed using your object you can then free up the memory for that object now that we've written all this code, let's have a test to see if it works. Okay, the program is running, so there's no errors running. Um, so basically this program is going to take in those inputs, it's going to put them into the object, use the methods to display what I want to display, and that should be it. So let's register, and there we go. So it is busy displaying this using our methods that we used for the object. I know it is very difficult to see why we would do it this way when it's a, such a simple program, but as you get to a more advanced program or if we had to use lots of dogs, you would see the value of using objects. It'll make your life a lot easier creating these objects or like super variables with, uh, with attributes and methods and story information for you all grouped together automatically. So you'll see the value of them as you get to more bigger programs. And hopefully for your pet, you'll find a way to use this in your performance assessment task at the end of the year. This example that I've done, plus all the information and all the notes about what I've just said, um, plus extra examples, plus some more stuff that you can practice on, is all available from the textbooks from Study App Opportunities. They've got um, data on their website for you to go access them, tell your teacher about it, or order one for yourself. Um, they've got textbooks for both Delphi and for the theory for RT as well as CAT. If you are doing any computer subject, they've got some lovely textbooks which I'm sure you will find very useful. If you missed part one or part two, then please feel free to go to our channel, um, have a look at the videos that we've got there, um, follow us on Twitter so that you can keep up to date the moment we load new videos, but there's lots of videos, plus there are lots of examples on how to use um, OOP or exam questions with objects in it.